another episode of With the Chiefs. Wait, 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 wait. Man, I need more rest. I hope you've got, I've got your last name right there. It's a very good pronunciation. You should know better than that now, Dom. I know. <laughs> All right, welcome back, Chief. Welcome back, mate. The Chief? Berlin, uh, champion of Berlin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that's um, what they're calling. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I heard. That's what I heard. Um, <laughs> where are you? Where are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Austria, up in the Alps. Bit of uh, altitude training, I guess. Um, you haven't minded a bit of Alps this uh, this holiday? Oh yeah, I guess like. You can't get this over in Australia, so you may as well make the most of it. Yeah, absolutely. We only, only booked it like last minute um, once we kind of figured out what we we're doing with everything else. Yeah. And figured, yeah, we like the mountains, so we might spend our last little bit there. <laughs> Good stuff. Can you hear the dog barking? Yeah. <laughs> we got a we got a situation. Ponyo <laughs> is um is a little Jack Russell that we're looking after on for my brother and um and his girlfriend um can you just settle down that's right i'm just gonna i might have to cut this for <laughs> your ponyo little jack russell's are like notoriously crazy dogs well yeah well he's uh sorry she's just been sleeping for the past four hours and now as soon as we've gone to record this she's um all active yeah so, yeah we're just sticking to hiking i think we've been through the skiing chat um yeah we had a whole episode on it almost <laughs> not from what i recall it's not your strong suit uh. <laughs> yeah. um so you're coming to the end of this big holiday now pretty much yeah that's it only like one week left pretty much yeah um how are you feeling about that you've been away uh, for ages yeah a bit sad um but it'd be good to be back home good to i don't know catch up with um yourself and mate yeah chiefs listening to this yeah uh, do, running you know we don't know who listens <laughs> yeah um yeah there could be in austria who knows yeah yeah you never know actually I highly doubt that ponyo it's okay <laughs> oh, God. but um yeah it's been i don't know a lot of fun and a great trip so far yeah that's good um how long uh, in total have you been away um, five months. So since May. Okay. Yeah. Long time away, but it'd be good not to be living out of a bag. Um, you can do your washing whenever you want. All those little things you take for granted. How was Berlin, but, mate? Yeah, Berlin. Um, I think what the last time we were on, we we're kind of just going into the taper. Yeah. And then, um, we met up with mum and dad. And we went to Lake Como for a couple of days, mm-hmm. which is a nice place to taper. Um, just Lake Como, that's, a, that's meant to be stunning, right? Yeah, really nice. Um, bit kind of too fancy though. Like, I don't a bit know, too like, fancy. Yeah, like um, I don't know. It's like all the really rich people go there, and yeah, just feels a bit too I don't know, swanky walking around town and stuff. But yeah. um, lovely, really lovely, and going on out on the boat on the lake was really cool. Um, saw like George Clooney's um, villa, which is looking pretty good. Apparently, he wants to sell <laughs> it though. Cause... Looking pretty good. <laughs> what did it have? Yeah. It did it have it plastered or something? Like this is George Clooney's <laughs> villa. Yeah, pretty much. They um, <laughs> when they when they hire out the boat, they say, "Look, this is like where all the villas are," and George yeah. Clooney's was like listed on it. But um. I think he wants to sell his house because he's sick of all the tourists coming and yeah at his life. it's just ruined imagine like price. your lake como house just ruined by by <laughs> people knowing where <laughs> it is like, yeah um but yeah i don't know george the, the place is looking good uh everything's under control um then after that we went up to um a, a town where my italian ancestors are from yeah called uh grozio which um, I think it's like it's up near like the Switzerland border. There's a ski village called Bormio that's I don't know a bit more popular that people might have 
I've heard of, but um, Grosio is like a tiny town. I think there's only a couple of thousand people there. Yeah. But um, it's pretty interesting hearing about um, all my history and stuff. Like my uh, great, great, great grandma came over <laughs> in like 1890. Um, and I think they were just like starving, like um, peasants kind of in the town. And uh, yeah, she got in a boat and came to Australia. Uh, and then same as my, she met my granddad over here, um, but he was from a village like maybe 20 kilometers down the road. Um, but I think when they're over here, all the Italians would stick together and um, hang out with each other. So um, she met him while he was over here and he moved over here because um, his town, they like were harvesting grapes and um, a disease went through the the crops for, and it took them 14 years until they could have a, a good harvest. So they pretty much were just starving and poor. Um, so he moved over to Australia as well to uh, make a living for himself. But um, yeah, all the history was pretty cool to to hear about um yeah and how, how'd you my... how'd you learn all that uh through mum went on like ancestry.com and then um there was a an aussie over there who's been there for like 30 years and she um followed her roots as well way back in the day and um kind of just has like records of all of the australians from that town who um came from italy and has like kind of tracked all of them and uh, looked up all their stories and stuff. And then she took us around and showed us like uh, the house that my um yeah old ancestors used to live in, and um yeah a few other things, which was really cool. Yeah, um, right. That'd yeah, be interesting pretty, to do. I yeah, it was a good experience. Time. It's like um yeah, like something pretty special, really. Like yeah, uh, I don't know. You never really get to see that sort of stuff and um yeah so it's cool to see all uh my ancestors hometowns and um yeah learn a bit about my roots and what their lifestyles were like over in italy um and then i did two taper workouts I did one in como which was um four by 2k but uh it didn't go too well um I think I had like stomach issues, which has just been like a recurring theme for pretty much every like important work that I've had this whole kind of block. Um, and then uh, it was, I went up to like a track in Switzerland from Como. You can just like run 4Ks and you're in Switzerland. And yeah, right. um, they've got really good facilities in Switzerland. Like all the tracks are just open to the public. Um, you can just rock up and run on them much better than Italy. Um so I went over there and did the workout, which, yeah, I don't know. Luckily there was like a, a bathroom right next to it. So I was like running over there after pretty much every rep. I had to cut a couple of reps like short as well. Um, did but, you have any special breakfast beforehand? Um, I had something silly. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. <'Cause> last time, <laughs> historically, it's been the, the buffet brekkie <laughs> with the lot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I don't think... There was anything, I don't think we were having too big of a breakfast then, but I'm sure I ate something like I shouldn't have. Um, and then in Grosio, there, there was another workout as well, which was, um, oh, it was really easy. I think it was four by five minutes, which went like really good. Actually, I felt really um, strong in that one. And that one was just in the next town over. There was a track there. So I was pretty lucky with that. Um and then, yeah, going into the marathon, I was kind of like, yeah, just reflecting on the block and stuff. And um, I think I'd done everything pretty well, except for, like we said before, just the the big long run workouts, which are probably the most important. Um, I don't think I really nailed any of them or finished any of them really. Like I always left it one rep short almost, um, which I think probably should have made me a bit more um, cautious in going into the marathon, but I still, um, yeah, I guess like race day came around and it was a bit annoying because I had to like jog like two and a half Ks to the start line and then 
once I got there, um, there's like a big kind of fenced off area for where you have to like enter in. Uh, and then I had to like jog all the way around that to the other side to get in. So I was like jogging around this um, fenced area, not knowing like how far I had to go to get to the start line and it ended up being like probably another three Ks or so. <laughs> um, wait, wait, wait. So kind... you'd already run two and a half Ks and then yeah, it so... was another three Ks. Yeah, exactly. Um, and there's just like people everywhere. Uh, I said you I was going to meet over five k warm up. Pretty much, yeah. But the last, the last three k's was like walking in like a big crowd, pretty much. Right. Um, but yeah, I said I was going to meet Alex Shaw uh, at like the start line, pretty much. It was like a, only like a really small area, but um, by the time I got there, it was like. I'd missed the time I said I was going to see him at and it was already like really busy. Like there was just people everywhere. Yeah. So he probably would have only been like maybe 20 meters away from me, but there was just so many people that I couldn't find him. Um, wow. Yeah. And anyways, uh, it kind of like got to the start of it. And um, at the start, there was like a, a, I don't know, pedestrian fencing with, um, it's like those ones where you can, unhook it but they had um signage on one side of it which was like a mesh sort of signage so you couldn't actually unhook it and move it because the mesh was in the way so it got to the start and uh you just had to like jump the barrier which was like a bit kind of risky and i was like at the front on the barrier i think i was like the first person to to jump it and i almost stacked it which Mm. was like pretty funny um but then we're in like Hang the, on, why, why is there no traditional, like, why is there no normal entry? Why have you firstly, first we started yeah. with 5K, 5K, like, yeah, <laughs> to get there. Annoying. And then, yeah. Was, yeah. yeah um, I'm sure there would have been some other way around it or something, but there's just so many people that you you had to kind of just, I don't know, get moving. Yep. Um, so, yeah, jumped the fence and then was in the starting pen. Um. It's probably about maybe 10 people back from the start, which is pretty cool. It's all like, um, keep jogging, walk across and stuff. Yeah. What are um, they, what are the, what's he, is it, what's he look like in person? What you'd expect? Yeah, very, uh, skinny. Yeah. And, um, skinny. elite. Looks like a marathon. Elite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, we're hanging around there for 15 minutes or so. Oh, I ran into, um, a guy called Matt from delta um i think he's had okay. like a heart problems before right okay um, yeah but was chatting with him which was good to see another aussie um yeah and yeah he said he was gonna be taking it a bit easier after he had like some heart troubles earlier in the year um but yeah it was good to find someone i knew to kind of just uh ease my thoughts i was already very um nervous and i don't know after having walks like five k's and stuff like that i was like just a bit off it oh yeah the um, whole time you're like you got the race nerves and then you're in a place that you don't know and then you're yeah. also worrying about that you've just expended some energy as well on top of yeah, that Yeah, exactly yeah um it's not a then, good mix of uh not a good mix before the race no yeah I was like, you weren't oh, exactly just... taking in the atmosphere in like a touristy no. way at that point i'm imagining yeah no, definitely not. Uh, but then, yeah, the gun went and um, I probably went out a little bit quick, um, but then eased back a bit. I think I was still kind of in the pace group. They were running like 227 pace, which was probably a bit quick. Um, and then, <laughs> I don't know, I like, for some reason, I just like, I didn't want to slow down. Like I just felt like I got to keep going. Um, but I got through to halfway and was already feeling like this is not marathon pace. This is too fast. Um, but I was like, oh, you know what? It's like, it's Berlin. Uh, this is kind of the chance to run fast. So we better give it a go. Then um, got to, it was, it, and the course is like super flat as well. It was just like um, pretty much, it felt like running on a treadmill, like, you know, you don't have to move 
think about like turning or going up a hill or changing anything. It's just like the same the whole way. Um, so yeah, I got to 30 Ks and <clears throat> was just, yeah, starting to feel it for sure. And, um, pace started to slow a bit, which is not good. Started, but I was still going okay. I was doing like 340, 345s, mm-hmm. um, which probably would have got me to like a, a PV or I don't know, a pretty solid time still. Then at about 35 Ks, I started like just like cramping and seizing up which I think is a sign of going out too fast. Um, yeah. The only other time that's happened is at UTA really. Yeah. Uh, but then from then on, it was just, yeah, like a struggle to the line. So um, I was tracking you and Alex on the, mm-hmm. on the app and basically you were pretty much bang on, you were bang on for uh, like I was tracking it. I think they were doing 5k intervals um mm. and yeah you were going out you the, like it kept your projection was like 227 then through 10k like 228 but but you yeah. still were hugging you still were yeah. hugging that time and we i think you mm. got through 30k like you said and you were still on uh i think you were still on pace like, at 30k was 229 pace or so yeah 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 and i mean it like um from the app's point of view, it was all looking good, but you know those last like twelve Ks are obviously <laughs> the most likely place where you're gonna to start to run into some yeah. issues. But um so what so how halfway through you were still did you get that sense? Well, how early on did you get the sense you were going too quick? You said like was it f- pretty what, much like- from the from the get go, I kind of knew like I shouldn't be here, like um but I don't know, especially going through halfway was like, you know, there's still another whole half marathon to go. Yeah. Like you have to be feeling pretty fresh. And I didn't really feel that fresh. Um, yeah. So I knew like, I was, yeah, it was going to be a real big struggle. Um, yeah. But I don't know, gave it a crack. Um, I think realistically, I was probably more in 235 shape. And like, if I'd gone out at 235, maybe I could have gone a little bit quicker, like 233 or maybe like on a great day around a PB. Um, but I don't know. It's like I had this 230, sub 230 thing in my mind the whole time. And um, yeah, like I just wanted to try for that, even though like I, it, it just wasn't possible. Um in hindsight, probably would have been much better just running a good marathon and, um, yeah, running to what my ability was on the day. But I don't know. Mate, it's it's sounding very familiar to a certain race that I did about a year ago. <laughs> exactly. It's pretty much like carbon copy. Of your yeah. Re- <laughs> I remember, um, yeah, I think... But I mean, you've always been of the view to like just give it a crack, basically. So yeah, I mean, yeah. But like having this a good one, race, yeah, it would have been a lot more enjoyable. Like if I had um, yeah, ran to my ability and done a performance where I was like, okay, like I gave that everything I had. Like that was the the best I could have run on that day. Um, which the way I ran it, it probably wasn't. Um, but yeah. I think that, yeah, it's just a little bit kind of sour taste in your mouth knowing that you fucked it up. <laughs> but, um, oh, well. I think because yeah. you knew. You knew from the early on, so you kind of like, you didn't, or in a sense, you're not like trusting your <laughs> trusting your gut in a way. Yeah. But, mm. I mean, it's very hard to pull off the, the gas <laughs> pedal when you're like already in it. Like it's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the last, like, I don't know, 12 Ks or so, um, or like seven Ks, I think it was, was yeah. Just like slowed right down was easing up and the goal was just to finish from then on. And, um, that's like the worst I've blown up ever. Um, like I think I was running probably like under five, just under five minutes or four thirties. And I literally couldn't go any faster. Like my legs like were taking like short little strides and um 
yeah, my form was out the window. I was just like leaning over at the hip, like, um, yeah, it did not look pretty. I ran into, uh, like Nico's dad was out there at, um, I think like oh, 39 Ks. Yeah. And he, um, ran over to me and jogged a bit of it with me and gave me some salt tablets and they helped heaps, which was really good. And, um, yeah, seeing like Beck and mum and dad out on the course helped a lot as well. Like just seeing people, you know, gives you a little bit of a, an energy boost. Uh, and then the last like K there was, um, this guy kind of looked like Goggins. He was like, um, I don't know, like African-American guy. Um, and he was saying like, come on, mate, like just two more laps to go, two more laps to go. And, um, yeah, every time I was like grunting or whatever, he'd just yell at me, two more laps to go. Come on. Wait, wait, where was he? He was like running with me. Um, but he was <laughs> did you look at him and go, mate, focus on yourself. All right. <laughs> no, I was all about it. Like I needed every bit of encouragement I could get. Um, That's so so good. I was like, yes, yeah. come on, let's go. Let's um, go. Let's go. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. He kind of dropped me a bit, but I said, yeah, thanks for the encouragement at the end. That's um, nice. He was like, two laps is a long way. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, bloody hell it was. Um, oh, at the end, but, I thought you meant like he, he's encouraging you and then he's saying it's still a long <laughs> way. Yeah, <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> um, and then coming down into the finish, I saw mum off to the side and I was like, oh, I'll give her a hug. So turned around and gave her a hug and then um she said oh beck and everyone else is down at the finish but um yeah i ran to the finish and was hoping to see them there but apparently they were only like 10 meters past where mum was so i completely missed them yeah, um, beck's just yelling and you're like see you later <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah pretty much i'll turn it around again <laughs> you do one of those ones where you pretend you haven't seen someone it's like <laughs> it looked a bit like that because Beck has it all on film. Like I run over to the side and give mum a hug. And then I like, as I'm passing Beck, I'm just looking at my watch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See you um, later, Beck. <laughs> but, yeah. I ran to the finish and then um, it was a bit, it was a bit tough at the finish trying to find uh, everyone as well. Cause it was back in that fenced off area where like um, only the runners could get into and then, uh, yeah, I went out one of the gates, but there was about, I don't know, 10 or 15 gates that you could go out of. Um, and we didn't organize where I was going to meet up with everyone. So ended up just having to walk back to the hotel um, while everyone else was trying to find me and then got back to the hotel and said, I'm alive, everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah. That was... I can tell you one thing for right now, they're not going to be getting snippets of this podcast and like advertising on their website. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't know. It was really good on course, like, super flat, super fast. Um, but because there's so many people, like, the, the start and the finish areas um, were, yeah, like, busy. And I think uh, if I did it again, it would have been nice to know that going into it and you could probably plan around it a bit more. Yeah. And what was um, the um, – uh, I mean – I haven't done a major, but I imagine like with that many people at any of these events, it's going to be logistically a bit of a nightmare. Um, mm. But um, what was the, <clears throat> what was the energy like on, on course? Like there was people, yeah, people everywhere, it's, obviously through the yeah, whole run. Like, yeah. Like um, pretty similar to city to surf, like where you got just people the whole way, like lined the course. Um, but it's kind of like disorientating. Like you, I did, I had no idea where I was the whole time. I was just running on a road with people lying next to it. Like if you said, Oh, like, um, do you remember this part of the race or that part of the race? Like, no, it was all the same. It was just a road with people on it. <laughs> um, mm. but yeah, uh, it was pretty cool though. Like in good energy, like if you need an energy boost, you just have to look at the crowd for two seconds and see that everyone was supporting you. Um, so that was really cool. Um, yeah. One, another little gripe, I guess, was um some of the signs that people have, like that say like, I don't know, oh, the Kenyans have already finished or like, um I don't know, like anything what? negative, anything negative kind of was like, I don't know, gave me a bit of a G up. I was like, oh, come on. Like I'm trying to run a marathon. 
I don't need wait, this. Wait, wait, who? I've never seen a negative race sign in my life. I don't know. Some of them were like just trying to make a joke or something. But when you're running in a race, you want to try and stay positive. Yeah. Um, that's probably yeah. why you'd make a sign. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, um, it's just like someone sign your 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 thirty minutes slower than Kipchoge. Like, yeah, exactly. There were like, signs what? like that out there, <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's like that's not helpful. <laughs> not in the slightest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that was another little gripe. Like, if you're going to make a sign, make it a positive one. Don't try and make some average joke at the expense of the runners out there. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, other than that, no, it was it was really good, really fun. That's good. That's good. Um, what was the what was going through the gates like? Were you paying any attention to the the gates and yeah. like the big? Because I saw it on TV. It looks pretty. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. No, it was pretty cool. But like everyone else was like sprint finishing kind of. I was like just struggling. Like it would have been good to have been able to pick it up and really grind to the finish. But I was just in a point where I was still like struggling like i could only run i don't know four thirties at the quickest you would have been um, in like you're in that like pain zone where you just do not give a mm. shit about your surroundings you just want to get to the finish line. <laughs> a little bit yeah and like every time i like tried to pick it up i'd like cramp up so oh. it was just like not like i couldn't even try um but it was pretty cool still yeah yeah well so what was your what was your nutrition like Nutrition, um, I was a bit worried about nutrition as well going in, like, because I had to carry all my gels with me and I was thinking, oh, am I going to have enough? Um, so I'd had, I think, five gels on me, um, three normal Morton gels and two of the uh, caffeine ones. And then the plan was to drink the, um, they had Morton drinks on the course as well, every like five Ks pretty much. So I just drink those as well on the way. Um, but it ended up like being too much. Like I had, I was pretty much having something every five Ks and, um, yeah, I just felt like pretty crook. Um, but then I was also like, when I was slowing down, I was like, Oh, maybe I just need to have some more and then I'll feel okay. But I don't know. It worked a little bit, but not really. Um, but yeah, all in all, I probably had five gels and then, I don't know, probably another five or six cups of Morton, which is just, yeah, a lot. And <clears throat> yeah, so nutrition, you had, you had a bit, so it's probably. But I think not... that was fine. And I don't, I don't think nutrition was an issue. I think I, I got that right, um, which is a one positive from the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, uh, if you go out too fast and you're burning burning energy too, too quickly for the distance there's almost it's pretty much nothing that could save you it's like it's like you, you have just... a the marathon is like you have a certain amount of you have like a certain pace that you can go and a certain like fuse that you can burn at and if you yep. yeah it's not like you're going to get to a certain point and just not um not have a great time which is what i discovered in melbourne and i think is yep. what you discovered because your other marathons you've run I like two thirty two, mm. and like run. My first marathon was two forty. Yeah, um, but that was on. Got... That was that was race well, right? That was good. That was good. That was a good race. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just got under that for this race. I think I ran like two thirty eight high. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, we did the time trial at Penrith Lakes where I ran two thirty two. Um, which I was probably in shape to go a bit quicker than. Cause I, I went out quick and then faded a bit, but not as much as this time. And then in Canberra around two thirty two as well. And that was like paced. Well, I went out, like I went through in 75, 10 or something, and then just faded a little bit to run two thirty two. Um, but yeah, this one's probably yeah, the biggest blow up I've ever had. And, um, yeah, a bit disappointing, but I will. When you started to slow, was it was it hard mentally? Like, I remember when I started to slow in Melbourne, I was very, very, getting very happy to at the prospect of pulling the pin. Although I obviously didn't, but like, I don't know. I think, mm. I think it's hard once you like fall off your goal, 
like a lot. Yeah. And I think I talked mm. about that in in the half, even in the half, although it wasn't like a massive blob, but still below expectations, if you want to call it. Yeah. So how did mm. you sort of navigate that? I think like going in, I still had like um an A, B and a C goal. And A goal was to run sub two thirty, B goal was to run like sub two thirty five, and then C goal was sub two forty. So I kind of had that in my mind still to try and just push on and hopefully get under 240. Um, but yeah, I definitely was thinking about pulling out for sure. Like, um, but the fact that like I was in Berlin, I'd been thinking about this race for like the whole year pretty much. Um, yeah, that kept me going. Mm. Oh, what any particular excuses that came up for me apparently my achilles started getting sore that's what that's one i kept looping oh, on for about 10 k's no i knew it was me there was like oh I, I was thinking about oh cramps like i could just say oh the cramps got me and then pull yeah. out and, so, and it'd be okay but um i don't know the reason you get cramps is from going out too hard so i was like this is just me right now i've i've stuffed it you wouldn't want to complain like someone that got a bit of water in their ear, <laughs> <laughs> ear once yeah. upon a time. Yeah, I've <laughs> I've heard you being off air quite critical to a certain someone. <laughs> nah. Nah. No, 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 you you right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, it was just it was my fault. Like, I don't know. I think. I've had a few days to process it now, but um, if we had had this interview, maybe like a day after I would have been saying, making up a bunch of excuses like, oh, it was this, it was that, which I don't know. I feel like yeah. I still have been pretty negative in this race review. No, nah, it's, it's, you're just giving an honest, honest recap of your thoughts. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. I think you're, you're adopting very much my philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we had this chat and I'd run, um, Sub 2.30, like I would have said, like, oh, Berlin, best race ever. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How much of it is overshadowed by, like, your feelings about the race and not about the reality <laughs> of the event? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely skewed a bit because of that. <laughs> no, it's good. I think, um, uh, what was the buzz like around, like, the elites and stuff like that? Did you? Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, like seeing all the elites at the start, uh, yeah, it was awesome. And just the whole city like completely shuts down just for the marathon, um, which was just crazy. Like a, a big city like Berlin is just, the whole thing's pretty much closed off, mm. which was like, I don't know, pretty unreal. Um, it would suck if you lived there and you weren't running in the marathon, but um, yeah, it was awesome. And pretty much every person, walking around was doing the marathon. Um, <clears throat> I think they had like 40,000 or 50,000 people, which is pretty cool. But, yeah. Um, it was a, yeah. Proper buzz about the city um, in the, the days before it, for sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah. As I said, we we're watching it on the telly and obviously another thing to chat about is the women's world record getting absolutely obliterated. Yeah, um, that's crazy by um almost what like almost like two minutes or something yeah we were watching yeah she looked absolutely incredible she had a um uh someone was pacing her i don't know who like this is uh, you know i should should have done my research but um i haven't but i was watching she was looking so strong throughout even even right at the end when she was sort of charging charging through i mean it's a big leap in it's a big leap in time um yeah absolutely yeah so oh there was those fancy super shoes as well that she was wearing they're yeah. like 500 i think they're like 500 um, yeah, 500 american dollars it's like 800 what? Australian. yeah are they even going to be available have you heard anything about those yeah they had them available in berlin um we went to like the adidas store the next day trying to find like a berlin um marathon t-shirt um and they had yeah the shoes were right there on sale um, yeah right okay yeah but usually it takes a while to get to australia yeah and um, i feel like the last like when the first adidas um super shoe came out like you couldn't find them anywhere in australia like it was 
it was like they didn't exist for until like the next version came out. They weren't even available. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think Adidas don't really stock Australia that well. No. They're leaving the, us the in other the dark. Brand. Yeah. Well, hopefully um, this one gets out there. I saw a stat on um, Instagram that she ran the second half of uh, second half of the marathon faster than her half marathon PB. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy. Oh it's, just like, it's insane. She used to be apparently like a, a 400, 800 kind of runner. Yeah, right. Um, okay. Like not too long ago. But yeah, she like stepped up to the, the marathon. She thinks she's ran like three marathons now. Mm. But um, yeah, good on her. Very impressive. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, Kipchoge, it's always crazy to see you forget like especially once you've done a marathon and you've felt what your legs feel like at the end of it to then see like to see him run the finish just looking so strong like his form is just pretty much perfect um yeah, crazy and he's, yeah I don't, I don't know it's just obviously just completely <laughs> completely yeah. different world and then that was his what six or something i think it was his six yeah, maybe fifth, i think his fifth win at berlin yeah which is incredible it's crazy. Um, and I think, I know a lot of people were asking questions like, oh, is he cooked? Like he's getting old now. Surely he's done. But I think after that performance, it shows that he's still right there and like is can probably break another world record eventually or yeah. win, win the Olympics for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, the only, not questionable, but performance that he might not have been happy with was the one in London, right? Hmm. Yeah. There's probably no other one that I can remember. Oh, uh, Boston as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no, he's pretty good. I think um, <clears throat> it would have been good to see like a a proper race at Berlin with like, um, who's the other guy who's run like a couple of 201s and stuff? Um, oh, the guy that got close to the world record, Kipton, I think. Yeah, Kipton, yeah. Like, that would have been see- awesome to see them. Yeah, and if like you had like Kipton, Bikili, Kipchoge, all in the one race, like at Berlin, that would have been awesome. I mean, um, so good. Why, mate? Surely they'd be, surely they'd be getting the cash out to put that together. Wonder why that's yeah, not like happening. I'd, I'd much rather like watch that than like a world record attempt or whatever. Yeah, um, seeing like a proper race with like the biggest guys at the moment, um, it's just much more exciting. Yeah, I think still my favorite race is when Bikili, Bikili was coming in second and looked like he was blowing up, and then he just put in like the biggest surge of all time, and yeah. ran like two. What was it, two seconds off the world record? Yeah, were you watching? No. Were we watching that together? I can't remember, or it might have been messaging, right. but it was yeah, because the the camera angle changed and he was falling off, and commentary started like talking about Bikili and um, yeah, you know he's like off the pace. Like the, uh... The women's race or something and then yeah. when the camera went back to him he was like out the front on his own <laughs> yeah it was crazy it was crazy but i don't know how you can do like, that at the end he was like 50 meters behind or like 20 meters behind um the lead pack and we thought oh he's gone and then uh next minute he's just starts dropping it. 250s just like yeah. making 250s look like nothing um yeah which is yeah, which is always cool. Uh, what was the <clears throat> what was your recovery like after the race? Like, how did you feel um, um, soreness wise and stuff like that compared to other races you've done? Yeah, felt pretty sore. I think because like I reached that limit and went over it. So um, whenever you do that, you're going to be pretty sore. Uh, so I'm only really starting to feel good. Like now, like I could probably run today if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I was pretty sore afterwards, but not like ridiculously sore. Um, yeah, but could probably like maybe the second most sore I've been after a marathon. Yeah, okay. I thought, yeah, probably regardless, whatever way you, yeah, because you got cramps and. Um, mm. yeah, you weren't in and still went like very quick through 30 Ks. Yeah. I think that's what the, was... the, 
the quickest thirty k time I've ever done. I can. Can you remember the half split? I'm pretty sure it was exactly what, almost like exactly what I split Melbourne half. Yeah, I think it was well. maybe even um like just under seventy four minutes, which is too quick. <laughs> I don't know. It's good. Um, it's good. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so what's what's next for the big chief? Are you just obviously just chilling? But like, have you? What are you doing? What are you thinking running wise? Like, or are you just just trying to chill out for now? Uh chill out. Do a bit of hiking up here. Um, I signed up for Bondi to Manly, which really um, isn't that the ultra? Yeah, eighty k's. Isn't that soon? Yeah, end of. October, so about a month away. And what um, what sparked that? Why why'd you do that? Oh, I, I think it just seems like a really cool race. Like um, yeah, for sure. Manly, like grew up surfing there. It's like the only ultra in Sydney. Um, it just seems like a pretty cool race. So no, for sure. I'm just thinking more that you you know sort of just straight back into it, which is which is good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think like I feel pretty good now. Like. If I gave it another week, I'd be pretty much back to ready to train 100%. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. So I don't think that the marathon will hopefully not – I don't have any, like, niggles or anything like that. It's just, like, general fatigue. So I don't think there's any excuses to not, um, yeah, get back into training and hopefully run a good 80K. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I think – yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I – need to i need to have a bit of a reset but other times i'm happy to just sort of jump back into it i guess it's really yeah it's really case by case then so obviously your energy levels are or you just your excitement about running still still there um yeah, yeah i think probably the fact that i didn't have a good race is um kept me well. yeah <laughs> um <clears throat> but yeah i think that'll be a pretty good race like I've ran a lot of that course already. So, um, yeah, it should be awesome. How many, do you know how many people sort of go in, go in that race? And are you, do you know, like who you'd be contending with and stuff like that? It's pretty much that sort of race is pretty up your alley. Yeah. And I think it should be a good one, but I, I guess I just wonder, like, hopefully I've got enough time to kind of put a one or two weeks of good training together and can feel the fitness come back before the race. Cause like <clears throat> right now I feel pretty unfit after the marathon. Um, you kind of stop running for two weeks for the taper and then um, another week off for the marathon. So that's like three weeks kind of down, um, which I don't know, is not too bad in the grand scheme of things, but as long as I can just get back to training um, should feel good, but I'm not too sure who else is running it or, um, I think usually they have a pretty big field though. It's like, well, last year was the first year they did it and there was like maybe 2,000 people, um, which is pretty good. Yeah, wow. Um, how's your, how's your um, uh, hammy? Is it is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. It just feels like, I don't know, a bit sore like running and yeah, trying to like sprint in the last bit of the marathon or pick up the pace. Um, I could feel that a bit more, but it's not like um, real sort of acute pain. It's just like general sort of like this hurts. Um, I think, yeah, I need to get in the gym probably and just do some deadlifts or uh, I don't know, squats, whatever, strengthen those muscles around the glutes and hammy and then should come good. Mm. Um, yeah, well, it hasn't, hasn't stopped you. So that's, no, that's all yeah, good. You've probably, probably gotten used to it at this point and it's good that it's not like, it's not really getting worse or not, um, not affecting no. your, your form and stuff like that. It's probably just a little bit annoying by the sounds of it. Yeah, pretty much. And it's like, it hasn't been like aggravated or anything after the marathon, which is, um, pretty good as well. I think, yeah, it's just niggling still sort of there. Maybe it's just one of those things, getting old or whatever. Getting old. Oh, wait, <laughs> 20, 29. No. It feels like, I don't know. I know, yeah. It feels like you get, we're getting old. Like <laughs> approaching 30, we're just like, 
I know. I know. Yeah, shit. You're like 30 is like this big milestone. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I don't know. It's but really not. It's not like in the scheme of things. Mum's like, I would do anything to be 30. Um, but <laughs> that's not how she talks. She doesn't have an Italian accent. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyway. What about um, your running? How have you been going? My running or my lack of my lack of running. I've had um uh how's the injury like yeah it's, it's good it's, yeah it's good it's um I feel like I'm not sure if it's similar to what you've got but it feels like it's um it feels like it's kind of it's getting it's getting better. I've really taken my my foot off the um I've really taken my foot off the pedal in terms of running like I've been doing um maybe like you know for the first week after the for the first week after the half marathon um i'm not sure if i've w- at what point i've talked about it but basically went to went to the physio before strained um basically strained the top of the hamstring and then mm. like pretty much the recovery for something like that is just deload as as much as possible um so i've done th- two i think it was like two and a half weeks of not like much running at all um and then doing like just glute bridges basically mm. to give it a bit a bit of strength to be honest in terms of pain it hasn't been that much it's more similar to what you're describing but it's just a bit annoying it's just a bit annoying um but yeah. i really don't want it to have i really don't want it to be lingering for too long and also it does make it does make like a lot of running, like not super painful, just like not as enjoyable as, as it, as it normally is because you've always got that sort of thing humming in the background basically. Um, Mm. So um, made the decision to, to, um, to, yeah, just try and get it right. And just, you know, if I have to sacrifice a bit of fitness, then that's okay. I don't have a big race coming up. Um, So, um, now instead of doing glute bridges, I'm doing like deadlifts. So it's probably the first weight I've had to buy. So I've just got like a little dumbbell, uh, sorry, not dumbbell, a kettlebell, 15 kilos, um, oh, nice. yeah. and just doing, just doing deadlifts. And that seems to be helping. Like hmm. it feels even just those little bit of exercises feels to have like put a bit of a, feels like it's strengthened it like in a way. Yeah, you feel like it's really like working that specifically. And yeah, like is strengthening it. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed like sort of after three three weeks, just walking around, it feels stronger. Like it just feels stronger or feels a bit better. Um, um. Then yeah, this week has been the first week that I can sort of pick it back up. I've done a few ten k, a few ten k runs. Um. So I can kind of run every second day, and then next week I'll be able to pick it up slowly a little bit more um dog's gone again <laughs> oh no it's okay um and then probably next week i'll do a i want to try to do like a tempo at the end of the week potentially to see how it feels in terms of my overall fitness it feels like it's gone like it it goes so quickly <laughs> do you know what i mean like it's been four yeah. four weeks and what I was talking to Tobias and what felt we were running around Narrabeen is we did that 34 K um, long run. Um, mm. And like when you're really fit, that easy pace, like four minutes, four minutes to four fifteen, feels like yeah. pretty aerobic. And my heart rate was really low. And that's like, feels good. like that's like, feel, yeah. How good does that feel? Like, like the best kind of feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's so good. And you don't like, like my heart rate was sitting around, one, one twenty, like not what? Sorry, not one twenty. Like one thirty-five to one fifty, even in that range, and like feeling pretty good. That's um, fit, yeah. And then like going for a run, like I went for a ten k run, and it's like four forty pace or four fifty pace, just feels like harder, like harder than that. And I'm like, oh yeah. god, we gotta. It's gonna take a while to um, it's gonna take a while to get back. But mm. well, it probably won't take a while to get back. It's just a bit of a shock to the system. Once you, yeah. once you get used to like, you put all that work in and get fit and then like, you've kind of 
got to build yourself back up again. But I guess that's part of the fun somewhat. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's, I feel like that's like the hardest point, part of running, like yeah, taking time off and starting again and getting back into it. Like it, it's not fun those first couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't even know like what my tempo pace will be. Like I was running this morning and we picked it up a little bit. I was around, around like a 4.15K and I was like, this doesn't feel... This doesn't feel good at all. Yeah. Um, but it's crazy how it goes so quickly. Um, yeah, but it comes back like I think it'll come enough. back quickly. Yeah. Mm. Just once I get back into sessions. I think the downtime, I don't know, it's like it's made me realize that I mean, I'm pro- I'm saying this now, but I should not neglect uh I should just really like I'm motivated to actually do some sort of strength work. Um mm. to to just get my tolerance up. I ran that big week and, uh, you know, the hammy just went, no, see you later. So I'm not, yeah. I'm not, I'll be very unlikely to get through a big training block if I'm not going to, if I'm going to not do strength, like, or I'm just going to always be, I'm always going to be sort of fighting that thing. So I think that the one thing that's made me realize is like, that's got to be a key focus or just trying to like try my best to incorporate that. Um mm. So, um, but yeah, the downtime really makes me, it just makes you really motivated to get back to training. Like I really just can't wait to start doing sessions again. I think when it gets taken away, you just, you just like miss, like I miss Tuesday, Tuesday sessions at Gore Hill on the Oval. Um, you know, I miss doing even, I miss doing a long run. I just miss feeling, you just miss feeling fit basically. Um, it's, it's yeah. good. Um, yeah, absolutely. I feel like yeah. in the marathon, like I spent 10 weeks getting back to that place where I was like, you know, fit again and running fast and yeah. enjoying running. And like, I feel like I hadn't been in that sort of fitness for ages, like probably, I don't know, a year and a half, like, yeah. Um. And to be back there, I was almost like tempted just to not run the marathon and keep that sort of fitness going because it, yeah, it's fun. That's like what running is all about, really. I yeah. Think, um, it's so much yeah. on the up, like so much on the up when you're building fitness is the fun part, and when it starts to work, like the um, uh, the I remember that twelve by one k we did. That was the week I got injured. Like it was just such a good feeling because I built into we built into that session. Like I know five weeks before I did eight by one K off 75 seconds and mm. like I blew up and was like motivated to, to do more of those workouts. And then by the time it got there, we absolutely nailed like the 12 by one K off 60 seconds, yeah. which is like just a big, just such a cool sort of thing to, to just see your fitness build really. And then, yeah, um, well, the good, good thing is I had such a good race at city of surf. Like I couldn't have asked yeah. for a better race. Um, so yeah. definitely not always lost in that training block. Like it's going to be, yeah. I mean, I'll be able to get back there, but it's, it's like, that was definitely, I think that was definitely the fittest I've, I've been. Um, mm. um, so that was kind of similar to me as well. Like, um, running the race in Ireland, um, that was a, a good like reward for all the work that I'd done. Yeah. Um, yeah, but how good's um, been fit. Yeah. I love being fit, but you're, you, you haven't had much time off. You've just done the marathon. Like you, your bait, you're running your, your base is still there. You put in a lot mm. of training. Yeah. There's still time to get back on the horse now and yeah, um, get back to it. Realistically for me, I haven't been out of the, I haven't been out that much. I think it's literally been four weeks of like, not doing pretty much anything um um i reckon next week i can ramp up to about 40 40 k's 50 k's put a do a session in there i got physio i got physio next week on on the friday so i'll go and see uh go see patty get it assessed and then probably probably won't do a session like i won't do like a when i say a tempo probably just try and see what like running four minute or four fifteen, like just a little bit quicker than the easy running I've been doing is. Mm. And then <clears throat> I won't do a session before Melbourne 10 K. So I'll use Melbourne 10 K as like a benchmark to see where, 
to see where my fitness is. Um, it's, it'd be interesting. Like, I don't know what I'll run or what I should target. Like, I, I honestly have no idea where my fitness is. I could, even if I go at it, if I like try and run three thirties, I reckon I'll just absolutely blow up. Um, but you reckon, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. What do you, what do you reckon? What's your prediction? I reckon you could go like sub 35, surely. I won't be able to do any sessions before then. Like, yeah. Um, it's in a few weeks. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, but there's definitely yeah, it's for, not too far away. No, it's not too far. There's definitely, um, there's definitely a big buzz around. Like I've been, been keen to think about doing a marathon. Um, mm. so it's either, I don't know, thinking about Gold Coast. It's the two thirty. It's the two thirty. That's always like, yeah. you know, it's so far away, but it's like. <laughs> It's like it's there, but it's not. <laughs> yeah. It's like in my head, in my head, I've run a 232. Like I'm like, I'm fit enough to run a 230. It's like, but no, yeah. like, I'm still. Like to run, to run two, sub 230 though, you probably have to be in like 225 shape. Like Yeah. Like, cause everything has to go right. Like it's just. Yeah. It's, like it's looking just... at Matt Gore and like um the sessions that he was talking about when he came on, that was like quicker than like what he ran he could like Mate, it sounded he like he was so in really good shape yeah yeah he runs 70 72 low at um at hocker half I think, was, I think he was like 71 something wasn't he yeah mate yeah i think so. like he, he was super, that was like on that fit. crazy hilly course like yeah. yeah 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 um yeah you're right you want to be like you want to be not close like fitter than the theoretical whatever you put mm. in the put in the calculator sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's just the, it's the, it's the one goal where you think about it and you're like, that's just, that's just a good goal. It's just a good, yeah. like crazy, like, crazy goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then, um, um, yeah. I feel so like there we I, go. Yeah. I held that goal like too strongly going into Berlin. Like, yeah, I think having the goal of running a good race is probably a, better mindset to have um yeah i think that moving forward that's probably what i should be aiming towards yeah yeah, <laughs> Even I, though, think, yeah. I, I don't know but you have to target something like God, it gives you the I don't, know. I don't know i've been we we've talked about this heaps and i've been back and forth in terms of philosophy mm. around goals and stuff like that it depends what what yeah. i'm feeling sometimes i think i'm a zen monk and i'm like i don't need uh I don't need goals. Yeah. So I just need to do it for the love of it or something like that. And then the next minute I'm like full into like thinking about some two thirty, and I'm like, I don't know. But it, it, it does motivate you a lot. And it, it does. Like, um, it helps you kind of progress your fitness. Like if, if my goal was just to run a good race, like maybe I wouldn't have trained the same way or um, I don't know. It's a tough one, but then going into the race, maybe you just need to have the goal, but, also recognize where you're at and um yeah listen to yourself and you, what your body's yeah. telling you i think you know i think you know somewhat like where you should where you should be um yeah mm. um i think i should have just been a bit more realistic with myself and yeah like but you, know, you. you never know though that's the mm. thing exactly anything can happen and anything can happen <laughs> And it's Berlin. It's the flattest it's course Berlin. in the world. It's the flattest. You've got to go for it. I think if yeah. you run like a two, 235, like 234, 50 or something, like in the back of your head, you're like, oh, geez, could I have like, yeah, oh, could I have like run 231 if I like actually had a crack? Or could I have yeah, even, exactly. how close could I have gotten? So, yeah, yeah you know, you're just going to like, if you ran that, that perfect ideal race for where, where you were at that point, you probably mm. would still be like, yeah, but like, I don't know. Like I felt good for so much know. of it. I feel like because you, you would, I would have gotten to the finish and I would have been absolutely spent. Like, I think I would have been like, okay, like that was my limit. Like, I don't think I could have gone any quicker, which is how I've felt for every marathon that I've done. I've gotten to the finish line and felt like, okay, that was it. Like I, yeah, I'm absolutely spent. After my first marathon, I thought there's no way I'm going to go quicker than that again. Like, that's the fastest I can run. <laughs> and, yeah, um, yeah, okay. So you yeah. might have been left with that feeling and been like, "That was where I'm at." <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, yeah. But, oh, it's all right. It's another one in the books. More experience. You is, know. 
yeah you're a wiser definitely. runner now upon reflection 100%. um and it's still a still a pretty awesome experience um yeah still a great experience and not a terrible time it's the third quickest marathon time i've ever run so yeah i mean to... still i mean the race could have gone a lot worse like you know mm. you you still I think if i pulled out i would have been kicking Mate, myself yeah you would have been <laughs> kicking yourself like you still got through the adversity of uh like having cramps mm. and like having your brain just yell at you for being like, mate, fuck, cramps. Blah. You still got through yeah. it, pushed through it. Um, yeah. So you can definitely give yourself credit for that. Mm. Yeah. Nah, all in all, it, it was a good learning experience and um, still pretty amazing to do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. What do you reckon? We call it there. I think, uh, Ponyo wants to eat some food. Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> any shout outs, anything else you want to mention? Um, not particularly. No. What about you? No, mate, we got, uh, looking f- very much looking forward to doing an in-person episode with you. Um, mm, and yeah, just more generally catching up as well. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll... Oh, we got, um, so Ty's doing the backyard ultra this weekend. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That'll be um, cool. that'll be. Do you know the details of that? Uh, I think it's like a Saint Ives. Yeah, so he's gonna run. I saw on his Instagram, he's gonna run, and on the No Name Running chat, he's gonna run mm. until he can't run. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah, um, I think every it's like a pretty much seven k's. I think they do every hour on the hour. Yeah. So it works out to be um. I think a hundred miles in 24 hours. Um, yeah. But you just keep going and going and going until you can't go anymore. And it's yeah, the last one's down. Wins. It's going to be a big grind. I mean, he's already done the, like the wings for life. I think he's got, mm. I think he's got a good sort of, um, he'll be able to push through. Like um, I hope, you just hope with those sort of races, something doesn't, I don't know like injury wise or something, but mentally mm. I think he's there and pumped up for it. So yeah. Um, I think it seems like he's in the zone. Ready to have a good one. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and then Ian in uh, Melbourne, mate, I'm keen to see, I'm glad you can say that. Yeah. Mate, Ian, your training block has been, uh, has looked, I've, I was actually on this driver, like I looks can... absolutely phenomenal. Um, yeah. he's one of the fittest guys in Sydney right now for sure. Yep. Big, have you seen on <laughs> big, bad Sunday long runs is what he calls them. <laughs> nice. He had I a really him. good one. The other day. I've Mate. enjoyed like following his training block. It's been awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, the last one he did was pretty much nailed. He's like put a like incredibly solid, like overall training block through. Yeah. Like it looks like been really consistent, minimal, it's minimal it's issues. Nice. It's hard to, it's hard to stay that consistent, like during, yeah. during a whole block. So um, I did see something about his calf on Strava, but I think it's Ooh. I think it's all good. Um, we're getting towards that. Oh, and Brendan Fink is also looking super fit. Um, He's and here, and right? Ollie Cashman, Ollie Brendan Cashman. Fink. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, yeah they're, they're all going to be there in Melbourne. I'm looking forward to seeing wow. that race. I, um, yeah, Brendan's put like a really good training block in. Um, Jeez, he's dangerous when he's fit. Yeah, he yeah yeah absolutely. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Same as Ollie Cashman, like just so talented. Yeah. I think he's killing as well. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot happening in Melbourne. I'll be over there cheering everyone on. Um, I'd love to do Melbourne next year, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the big talk Maybe about Gold Coast. Yeah. Gold Coast or Berlin. Like there's a lot of talk about Berlin. Chris yeah. Gatz like geeing me up for Berlin. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's early days. I just want to just want to get back to fitness yeah. and doing sessions. But um, yeah, I think um, registrations for Berlin opened. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think back. I saw that in the. I think I saw that, um, mm-hmm. in the Delta chat. The. <clears throat> I wonder if I can transfer my registration from this year. Probably not. Probably not. I'd highly doubt it. <laughs> Did you even like cancel it, or you probably should have looked into that. Yeah. No, they're just like, 
no deal like pretty much everything else i should have got um, i've had i've missed out on city marathon with the injury i've missed out on and, and berlin so i'm actually i'm actually a good candidate for the freaking cancellation insurance <laughs> like yeah the pay off i'm like i'll oh, get this shit out of there i'm not paying for this and then like yeah. literally i could have five used it on both you. yeah five bucks what well, <laughs> well, you're taking more money off me <laughs> <laughs> Very much adopting a Dominic Bullock sort of mentality with that one. <laughs> um, yeah, it'd be good to see. So what date are you officially back? Back on the 8th of October. Right, okay. Cool. Mm. Mate, but that's then coming up. I've got um, a bit of time off before I go back to work, though, which would be good to Reset. sort my life out. Yeah. yeah. You've been away for a while, so you've got to get all your... Get all your ducks in a row. Um, go from there. But um, yeah. all right, mate. I really I enjoyed that episode. There's a bit of a bit of yeah, shenanigans bit with Ponyo. Stop and start. But, um, yeah, I'll try and I'll yeah, I'll try. And, um, it was good once we got into it. It was good once we got into it. Ponyo, that was you. That was you. But it's okay. <laughs> we'll forgive you. Um, <laughs> um. All right, mate. Well, uh, I'll catch you soon and stay strong. And stay fast. That's all right. That's it. All right. Thanks for that. Thanks, Adrian. Bye. No worries. See you, Chief. Yeah. See you, Chief. That was you, Adrian. See ya. Yeah. <laughs>